All right, friends and neighbors, time now for another networking video. Today, I thought we'd talk a little bit more about TCP, and in particular, TCP congestion control. So let's remind ourselves a little bit about uh, TCP, right? As I've got here on the slide from the RFC, the transmission control protocol is intended for use as a highly reliable host-to-host -host protocol. And so that's what we're trying to do. And part of that is that we already know we're going to keep track of the bytes via the sequence and acknowledgement numbers. But another part of that is reliability in the presence of congestion. And so as our poor congested baby would indicate, we, this is a concern that we've got to take care of. So what have we talked about so far? Well, we know how the TCP header is constructed. We've got that 20 bytes with all of those fields that include sequence and acknowledgement number, source and destination port, the flags, and all those kinds of things. We also know that TCP starts off with a setup handshake and a teardown handshake at the end. We also know now how the sequence and acknowledgement numbers work. But as we remember, this video is really about robustness and how to handle the problem of congestion. So, in addition to the sequence and acknowledgement numbers at the beginning of the conversation, we also have this initial window size. And I'll emphasize the initial part of that because the window can change, but both sides communicate their initial window size to the opposite end. Now, window size is an important detail because not only does it uh, restrict the amount of data that can flow, but it also can have a big impact on performance. So the sender of the data has to be aware of how much data the receiver is willing to accept or can accept. But we also have to remember that in the case of a client, right, so a client has said to a website, I want your data, please send me the website. So the server now comes down and says, blah, here's all the data. But that seems like it's one way, but it's not really, because the client can also push data up to the server sometimes. Um, or if you're doing a file sharing thing, you know, you can have data flowing in both directions. So it's not just that data is flowing in one direction. Both sides need to be aware of how much data the opposite end is willing to accept and they have to be aware of how much data has already been sent. And so that becomes an important aspect to this. Now the basic idea of sliding window is that I start off with a window size of X. And as I receive data, my receive window is closing down. And it doesn't start to open back up again until I acknowledge data that you sent me. Once the window is shut, no more data can be sent. Now that doesn't mean TCP traffic can't flow in both directions still. It just means that no more new data can be sent. Now I've got a little note here on operation today because TCP has been around for a little while and we'll see that there have been modifications to TCP over the years. Now the key to the window size is that if you send me data, I'm going to acknowledge the data that you've sent me. And I'm going to provide a window with every single message. And the idea is that that's my receive window. That's what we're talking about. So I'm going to acknowledge what you sent me. But the key to the window size is that the window is how much data I'm willing to accept, right? And the window size is modified based on not only how much data you've sent me and how much uh, data I've been able to process, but it's this numeric value that says, listen, here are the sequence numbers from you that I'm willing to accept starting from the acknowledgement number that I'm about to send back to you. So if you are sending me data, I acknowledge the data that you sent me at some point. And I'm telling you, listen, this is how much room I've got in my window. And I'm counting that window size from the acknowledgement number that I'm sending back to you. So that window size is telling you how much data you can expect to be able to send to me without further permission from me. In other words, without getting further acknowledgements. And remember that the original idea behind this need for, for congestion control is the robustness principle. 
in that TCP has this, you know, good net citizen sort of approach to things. Be conservative in what you do and liberal in what you expect, okay? So you want to be able to accept a lot of stuff from other senders, but you don't want to push too much stuff out into the network without the opposite side being ready to receive it. So here's a little graphic I prepared for, you know, how this all works, right? So the client connects and says, hey, um, I'd like your website or I'd like whatever data you're gonna send me. And so I do, for example, an HTTP get. And so the server says, here you go, and sends a truckload of stuff my way. And what the client at that point has is an open window. The window is not closed at all because we haven't gotten any data. But you send me a truckload of data and my window is closing. Now, if I don't acknowledge any of that, then my window slams shut. It's closed. You can't send me any more data. And so that's effectively the client or whoever received the data saying, hold on a sec, let me process this. And then as I acknowledge you, my window will start to open up a little bit, or if we're doing an actual window, right? And then at some point, the acknowledgements are sent out and the server receives those and understands that the client has uh, processed the data or at least received it. And now more data can be sent. And that's entirely based on the window. And you can track the window size actually closing over a connection if there have been no acknowledgements. Now let's take two examples of window size. If we have a large window, meaning that you've got this enormous window and there's no restriction on the data that you can send, well that encourages the sender of the data to just start flooding you with data, which might be fine, right? And we'll find out later on, in most cases it is fine. So we send a lot of data, we just keep sending data and we get acknowledgements from the other end whenever we can, but we just have this big pipeline just here. Wow, here's all this data. So that encourages the sender to transmit data. Uh, but there is the possibility of congestion in the network whenever if everybody was doing that. And there is the possibility of overrunning the client, particularly if you had delayed acknowledgements. Now the opposite side of that is a very small window. If we have a small window, what ends up happening is the minute you get anything, the window closes and then we have to wait for an acknowledgement for the window to open back up again and then more data comes and the window closes so it winds up with this sort of stop start stop start sort of transmission and of course what that means is that the link can be idle we could have the ability to send more data the ability to process more data but we're not utilizing that capacity because the window is too small for the particular application and that's a that's an important idea to remember that app, some applications might need different size windows. Now, another key to this is that even if the window is closed, right? I've received a lot of data, I'm processing it, my, and I haven't acknowledged anything, that doesn't mean that I can't still receive TCP segments from the other side. The segments that I'm allowed to receive or the messages that I'm allowed to receive are, are acknowledgements. I can't get any more new data sent to me, but I can receive and process acknowledgements, meaning that if I sent data out, the opposite end can acknowledge those. We also see that this is uh, one of those places where the reset and urgent pointers must be processed even if your window is closed. All right, so we just spent all this time on window size and sequence and acknowledgement numbers. Why were we doing that again? What's the whole point? Well, remember that when we fire packets off into the network, we have the potential to create bottlenecks, to create congestion. So what TCP is doing is giving the receiver the opportunity to govern how much data can be sent to it, right? So if I'm the receiver, I get to tell you how much data you're, you're allowed to send to me, how much stuff I'm willing to process. And what this means is that from your perspective, you want to send me a certain set of sequence numbers. And so I'm telling you, this is what I just got from you. And here's my window size. So the collection of sequence numbers of your data that you can send to me is limited by that window size. So it's a range, right? So if, if I just got packet number one and I give you a window size of a thousand, that's the next thousand bytes that you can send me or the next thousand sequence numbers that you can send me. So both sides have that receive window that we're transmitting to the opposite end. So at the same time that I'm telling you, this is how much 
data I can accept, you're also telling me how much data you can accept. And remember that from your perspective, you're sending me sequence numbers. From my perspective, the same values are seen in the acknowledgement numbers. So when I send you an acknowledgement number and I say, this is the next thing that I expect from you, by the way, here's my window size. What I'm really telling you is that's the set of your sequence numbers that you can send to me. Now, I just wanted to put this set of variables up here. Uh, TCP has a transmission control block concept. And so we have to keep track of all of these variables, right? And if you think about it for a sec, what am I trying to keep track of? Well, I'm trying to keep track of how much data I sent you. I'm trying to keep track of what you acknowledge from me. I'm trying to keep track of how many bytes were in each one of the packets. How much data do I have left before I have to stop sending? But at the same time, I'm keeping track of what I got from you and what I'm allowed to send to you. So there's this collection of sequence numbers that we're keeping track of for both sides. And we do it on both ends of the conversation. Now, just for fun, here's some diagrams, right? So if, I, if I'm keeping track of what I'm allowed to send, right? I have stuff that I've sent that is unacknowledged, right? And then I keep this idea of, all right, what am I allowed to send next? And those, that is the collection of data that sort of, that sort of left my queue and that's in my queue. And then I'm also aware of how big the window is that you've told me about. So, all right, I sent you this already. Uh, there's a certain number of sequence numbers that you haven't acknowledged from me yet. And then I've got this window size that you told me about. And so that's the total amount of data that I'm allowed to send. On the other hand, you've told me what you've gotten from me. So I've gotten this indication from you that you got my sequence numbers, that you were able to process up to a certain point what you expect from me next. So I know what I've gotten from you and what I told you my window was. And so together, those constitute the total amount of data that I'm willing to accept from the other side. So here is an example of a packet that was sent from a server to a client. And it doesn't really matter the direction. The important point here is that we've got this sequence and acknowledgement numbers. Now, for the window, because we're talking about receive windows here, I don't really care about the sequence numbers, but we are going to take a look at the acknowledgement numbers. So the acknowledgement number of 406 means that the server received bytes up to uh, 405 at this point and is acknowledged the receipt of all of those bytes and is expecting byte 406. Now the window size is 3723. And what this means is that the server is willing to accept a chunk of data that is 37 123 bytes in size, but it starts from 406. So it's really 406 plus 3722. So that is the total number of bytes that the client, in this case, uh, 192.168.1.1, can send to the server without further permission or without further acknowledgments. So that's how the whole thing works, right? This is everything that we come to know about sequence and acknowledgement numbers. And all that we're adding here is this receive window size. Now remember that this is one direction, so that all of that also happens in the opposite direction because the client also has a receive window size and the set of sequence and acknowledgement numbers that he's keeping track of. And the important thing to remember is that the acknowledgement numbers that I'm using for you are really your sequence numbers. Now the other thing that I've included here is a calculated window size and the window scaling factor. We now know all the variables that go into calculating the window size and how do, uh, how do each of the two sides react to that, right? So we've got all these variables that we keep track of. The thing that we haven't talked about yet is that window scaling factor. Sequence numbers, acknowledgement numbers, and the window. But these are not the end of the story. They work just fine. It's how TCP operates. But there have been lots and lots of additions to TCP over the years. One of them is RFC 5681, which talks about TCP congestion control. And there are really four algorithms in this particular RFC. And they're really all about allowing TCP to be even more cautious than what we've talked about so far, or 
a way for TCP to increase performance and responsiveness to what's going on in the network. So TCP can actually recover very quickly from some losses and things like that with duplicate acknowledgments and things like that. But I only mention that here because there's a lot more to TCP than just what we see in RFC 793. Now RFC 7323 is another important part of the TCP conversation. And this is what we just saw in that Wireshark capture example. So this particular RFC talks about a couple of really, really big ideas. One is the window scale and one is the timestamp. Now the thing that we saw in the packet was the window scaling. The window size and the sequence and acknowledgement numbers are limited to the field size that we have. So we have the ability to scale the window. Well, why would we do that? Well, if you've got high speed links or you've got nodes that can process data and get acknowledgements out there very quickly or both, then why would you limit yourself to the maximum size of the window that we have seen in uh, RFC 793, which is just a couple of bytes in size. The window scaling allows for enormous windows, and so really the result of this is just data, just constant flow of data in both directions. So the window size is not closing, 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 closed. What we see is this, window size just doing, I'll close a little, I open, I'll close a little, close a little, open, 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 close, 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 like this. And it never ever closes down. We just have this constant flow of data. And so that's a real performance increase for TCP. We never really have to worry about the window closing down on us. Uh, we will see, uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the, uh, the timestamps later on, but the really big deal for us today was that window scaling factor and how that impacts TCP congestion control. Excellent, excellent. We've now talked about a lot of TCP operation and now we've got TCP congestion control in the toolbox. So this has been a discussion of window sizes and the calculation of data that has been sent and can be sent farther. So we know that both sides have to keep track of the window size. I'm keeping track of my window size, but I'm also keeping track of what you sent me and what I sent you. And so we really try to avoid sending more data than the other side is willing to accept. We also know that TCP dates from a long time ago, but it's still relatively unchanged. Now, RFC 793 has not been obsoleted, but it has been added to. And one of the big things that we talked about today was that window scaling factor. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I helped. And may your packets always reach their destinations. And I guess they kind of will, especially with an enormous window size.